This is ESBR Boxing. This is a short preview video for a fight that is happening this Thursday. Former world champion John Pascal is fighting Michael Efert. I hope I've said that right. Um, who is who is from Germany? Everyone knows Pascal. He's been around a long time, 40 years old. Fought Carl Froch a long time ago. Delighted to be joined by Danny. Danny, thank you for your time. Um interested to hear your general thoughts on this one. It was kind of one that's definitely gone under the radar. It's a final eliminator, so the winner of this could be fighting Gaturbiev, could be fighting someone else for a world title before the end of this year. But yeah, um, let me know. Let me know what your thoughts are on this one. Yeah, it's an, an interesting one. As you said, it has gone massively under the radar. Jean Pascal, I think. There was talk of that Boyatzi fight last year, then the whole sort of scandal with Vada testing and whatever, which has come back to look quite funny given some current events. But he's sort of, in a sense, been a bit of a forgotten man. In that light heavyweight division, despite, you know, I know a lot of them were, it's weird because he's had his last three fights, there have been some good wins, but a couple of them are like three, four years ago. Um, Badu Jack win looks even better now, given Badu Jack's last fight, winning the cruiserweight title against Macabu. Fan Long Meng was a decent win as well. And that was only last year. So you'd imagine he's got a bit left in the tank and... Um, as we sort of touched on off the call, it's been billed as a final eliminator for Baturbiev, which is like the only sort of name he's not fought at light heavyweight. So no, I'm interested to watch it, to be fair. Um, in terms of Michael, you've gone Eifert, I'll go Eifert. So just between us, we've got it right. 11-1, and one, not, you know, no real recognisable names in his resume. The only defeat when I was looking through box rec was the fellow called Adam Zensky. He went on to avenge that. And that Dzinski is fighting for the, the European title next month. So obviously got some level of ability, but you would imagine uh, if Jean Pascal is anything like even the version that beat Meng or Mang last year, he should have more than enough to deal with him in pretty comfortable fashion. Yeah, we'll see. Like, we're not going to pretend to be Michael Efert experts on this channel by, by, by any means. I think from a snapshot, I've, I've seen out of the 11 wins only... Four KOs, so you wouldn't think he was a massive puncher. Um, I've kind of noticed if you look at some of his wins, some a lot, of, a couple of them are actually um, being close points decisions. So it could be the case his record could look a bit different to how it does now. However, that is his record. Last fight was against a guy who was fourteen and one. Again, that was a kind of a close points win. Um, so I think it's clear, kind of who the heavy, who the who, who the heavy favorite is. Efforts only twenty fives is a big. Big age gap around 15 years there. Um, Pascal, this is his 43rd, 44th fight, turns 41 um at the at the end of this year, made his debut in 2005. Do you think do you still class him as like a top 10 light heavyweight, top five? Where do you think he's where do you think he's at now? I think you have to have him at least the top 10. I would have thought, I mean, Meng would have probably been considered a fringe top 10 light heavyweight when he beat him. Mm. He's, he's he's not lost since the Bivol fight, uh, if that's right. So, I mean, you look at the sort of champions are sort of head and shoulders clear. Then you've got Boyatze, Yard, Callum Smith. And after that, Joe Smith Jr., Jean Pascal. I think he's in there. He's in my top 10, definitely. Top five might be a bit of a stretch. I think people probably just assume because he's 40 and he's had, what, three fights in four years or something like that. that and it's probably not you know, um, a ridiculous thought to think that he is in terms of like current ability, probably there's maybe fellas outside the top 10 who've maybe beat him. But if you're going on what we've seen in the ring resume, I think you still have to have him as a top 10 light heavyweight. Do I think he poses any danger to Arthur Baturbev if that fight's going to happen later in the year? I don't think so. Um, but that's no disgrace because I think 99.9% .9 the light heavyweights, you could say the same about. Yeah, no, exactly. I think I think one issue for me with this is that if he wins this fight, he might not end up fighting Baturbiev for eight, nine months, by which time he's that bit further down the road. He has turned 41, and I don't really want to see a 41-year-old against Baturbiev, um, to be honest. Um, so we'll see, we'll see, we'll see what happens. I mean, fair play for pa Pascal week is kind of keeping on going, but um, yeah, we'll see. See what happens on on Thursday night, Danny. I think like we will leave it there unless you have anything else to add for this for this fight. 
Uh, no, I think we've uh, covered it quite well, to be honest, mate. Um, as you say, if, sorry if there's any Michael Eifert fans watching and we've not given your boy the coverage he deserves, but uh, it is what it is. Yeah, absolutely. Um, cool. C- catch up, kind of, kind of post post fight, but yeah, it is set this Thursday. John Pascal, Michael Eifert in an IBF final eliminator. So the winner could be fighting Baturbiev, could be fighting someone else for a world title, maybe b- before the end of the year. Danny, thank you for joining me, and I'll catch up with you soon. Okay. No problem, mate. Thanks.